For years, Russia has violated the terms of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty without remorse. We provided Russia an ample window of time to mend its ways and for Russia to honor its commitment. Tomorrow, that time runs out. That's right. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announcing that the U.S. is leaving the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty with Russia. The implications of that, the significance of that, with retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. Uh, General, good to have you. What do you make of this? Well, I think what you see here is uh, a president who looked at this just like he did the Iran deal and the uh, Paris Climate Change Treaty and said, now, why are we doing this? We know they're cheating. We know they're violating it. Why are we doing this? It doesn't make sense. And uh, I, think that, uh, I think that what he is doing was done the right way, and it is a, absolutely the right decision. And why did it take, uh, you know, at least three administrations before him not dealing with it. Why did it take Donald Trump to come along and do this? Did we know, General, I mean, back in your day, did you know that this was going on or suspect it was going on? I know it's been whispered that they weren't adhering to this sort of thing, but what, what, what changed? Well, we confirmed it in about 2013, and it became rather public at, in 2013. But, yeah, we knew before then that the Russians were violating this. So uh, this, this was no surprise when, when uh, it was actually announced that they were doing that. You know, um, General, I do want to talk about this, but I'd be remiss, since you were in intelligence as well, to, to maybe give us your thoughts on the battle the president has had, you know, calling out his intelligence team, saying they were long, uh, wrong about some of these security threats from Iran and uh, elsewhere in North Korea. Uh, now they, he's kind of saying in a tweet that uh, they're all on the same page. Um, what do you make of that? Well, first of all, let's just look at it practically. What we saw was we saw the intelligence community giving an unbiased, non-political assessment of where the world threats stand today. What affects America? Uh, that, is, uh, that is exciting to me because uh, during the last eight years under the Obama administration, we actually feared the intelligence community because of what they were doing to or against Americans. And now you've got a very open and candid assessment that came out. I think the president's uh, reaction initially was just exactly what we've seen before. It was a knee-jerk reaction. But I think that uh, he is now walking that back. And uh, look, he is allowing these people, good people that he selected to run these agencies, he's allowing them to uh, give an honest assessment here. And, and it, uh, I, it restores my faith in the intelligence community, Neil. Do you think that that should be done privately, though, sir? Well, I think that the president should know what they're going to say before they go up there. But I, I can assure you that if the president wanted to, if the advisors around him wanted him to take their briefing and get at least the highlights of what they were going to say, it's available to him. But he is the president of the United States and probably the busiest man in the world. So I, I, I don't know why he didn't know that ahead of time. Uh, but that's something for his, his uh, administration to but work out. But wouldn't they have been able to know amongst themselves? These are all smart folks that um, this is, in some cases, a 180 from what the boss is saying. We ought to be on the same page here. Well, yeah, I mean, there's certainly uh, coordination between the uh, various elements of the, of the intelligence community. And, of course, Dan Coates has the statutory responsibility for the right. entire uh, intelligence community. So he has to know what Gina Haspels is going to say from the CIA. So there is that kind of collusion, coordination but again, I want to say that I, I was not surprised by anything that they said. Anybody that watches what's going on in the world that, that uh, has stays on top of this was not surprised by that. The only thing that surprised me was when Dan Coates called for a restructuring of the intelligence community, and I thought he was dead on with that, but I did not expect to hear that. Uh, or that he might not have run that by the president. Well, yeah, that's correct. But I, it was in response to a question which... True. But, you know, the last reform was 2004 in the Intelligence Reform and Terrorism Prevention Act, which came out of the 9-11 report. So I think that uh, the fact that he's calling for it is a very positive thing because uh -huh. it is time for the intel world to look at itself. All right. See, I can challenge you on that, General, because you're on remote. If you were here in person, I would not have asked you that obnoxious question, but you are remote. Uh, always good seeing you, my friend. Thank you very, very much. Good being with you, Neil.